Ooh, ooh, too hot, too hot, too hot, too hot. <laughs> What's a fun treat for Halloween that's also a craft? Betty Crocker's answer, a lollygog party. I'm Melinda and I'm cooking my way through Betty Crocker's 1971 recipe card library. Today we're making lollipops from the Lollygog Party card, which is from section F, children's parties, card number seven. I'm excited for this card. I don't know what a Lollygog Party is. I Googled it, nothing came up. <laughs> so I think Betty Crocker made this word up. And I think this because on the recipe card, it says circle party invitations with large and small question marks. What does a Lollygog look like? We don't know. If you come dressed like what you think a lollygog looks like, perhaps we'll find out. <laughs> so the theme of the party is like, there's a mystery word that we're trying to figure out what it means. Okay, cool. <laughs> but this card has a recipe for homemade lollipops, which I'm really excited about. And when I realized that some of these lollipops on the picture have candy corn embedded in them, I was like, oh, this is a perfect recipe for Halloween. We can make some lollipops with some candy corn and it's the best time of year to be eating sweet candy treats. So let's give it a try. All right, so we're at the stove. We're gonna make our lollipop sugar syrup situation. I'm a little nervous. I've never made candy like this before. We'll see how we go. <laughs> what do we have to do first? In a one quart saucepan, combine butter, corn syrup, and sugar. Heat to boiling over medium high heat, stirring occasionally. All right, so we have a quarter cup of butter, three quarter cups of sugar, and a half cup of corn syrup. Get all that in there. So far, pretty easy. I'm gonna kind of mix this around, <laughs> I guess, to get the corn syrup and the sugar to combine. What a weird combination of ingredients. What's interesting is that it's pretty opaque. I'm curious to see what happens as it continues to boil and cook. But like the lollipops on the front, I guess they are kind of opaque too. I thought that they'd be clear, you know? Yeah, maybe they're opaque. Hmm. I guess that's from like the butter fat, right? Oh, I thought I was making like a clear syrup. All the butter is melted. Now we're just trying to achieve a boil. It's like boiling on the edges of the pot, but not in the center. <laughs> but I think we're boiling. We're getting bubbleage throughout. There's bubbles in the center now and continue cooking, stirring frequently until it reaches 270 degrees on a thermometer. It's getting really big and puffy. There's a lot of aeration in it, which I think is what we're looking for. Okay, we reached 270. So I'm gonna take it off the stove. We're gonna move back to the table and we're gonna stir in our food coloring. All right, it's off the stove. It approached 270. And so now we're gonna quickly, while it's still piping hot, separate it out into two bowls so I can make two colors. Oh gosh, oh gosh. Oh no. I don't know why I always pick these recipes where speed is of the essence. And then of course, I've decided I wanna make two secondary colors, orange and purple, which means I have to like mix them together and use color theory. <laughs> so we'll start with this one. I'm just gonna drop in some yellow and some red and start mixing. Oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh. That's orange. Same thing, a little bit of blue. A little bit of red, and we'll see if we can get some purple going here. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> it's kind of like a spooky purple, which is what we're looking for, right? Okay, some of it's already hardened at the bottom of the bowl. Ah, do you see this? <laughs> There's hardened candy all over. Now, quickly, quickly, let's pivot. I have a buttered baking sheet here, and I have some lollipop sticks. Quickly, quickly, quickly. And now I'm gonna take, I guess, like a tablespoon. Drop mixture by tablespoon over end of candy stick. Uh-oh, uh-oh. It's already hardening. Oh no, it's entered like a pliable stage. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> 
See how there's just like strings of candy everywhere? I've <laughs> been watching a lot of TikToks of this candy shop that makes like hand pulled candy. <laughs> and now I feel like I'm there. It really slides right off. It's not sticking to other things except to each other. Now it says you can put the candy pieces in now or after they're set, which I'm worried about not being able to scoop it all out before it's set. So I'd rather keep scooping and keep making lollipops. And then we can always put the candy on after it's set by using a little extra corn syrup, I think. Ow, 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 ow. It's now kind of um, approached kind of a now and later stage, a starburst-esque stage. The sizes are kind of random because I'm just panicking <laughs> and not really taking measurement into much consideration here. Ooh. <laughs> it's so stringy. It's like that dragon's beard stuff, but it's still so hot. How could you be so cold, but so hot at the same time? How many did I actually make? I had 18 sticks, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13. Okay, I made 12, I made a dozen. It's pretty good. Okay, cool, let's decorate them. <laughs> How did a candy modeled after chicken feed become an iconic Halloween treat? In the 1800s, farmers made up about half of the American labor force, and so candy companies produced agricultural themed candies like pumpkins, chestnuts, and turnips for children in farm country all year round. A man named George Renninger from the Wonderly Candy Company invented the candy corn shape specifically. And then the Golitz Candy Company took their own stab at the recipe. Before World War I, most Americans didn't actually eat much corn, so they marketed the kernels as chicken feed, where it really took off. This was before automation in the candy industry, and it was very labor-intensive to make it by hand. Sugar, corn syrup, fondant, and marshmallow cooked into a slurry that then poured into cornstarch trays imprinted with the kernel shape. It took three passes to make white, yellow, and orange colors before being packaged into wooden boxes and delivered by wagon. Once more automations became available, candy corn was produced in mass and available year round. But as Halloween became more and more dominated by candy beginning in the 1950s, candy corn increasingly became the iconic candy for the spooky holiday. All right, so I tried pressing a candy corn into it while it was still warm and it didn't really stick that well. I mean, it, it did stick, but I feel like I was like, let's just wait until they're cool. Then we'll attach the candy the other way that Betty says we can. So she says, to decorate when cool, brush underside of candy decorations with corn syrup, press onto lollipops. So I have this like little swizzle stick that I'm gonna use as like a tiny spatula. And I have candy corn and I have Skittles, which I think will both be kind of cute additions to the lollipop. So I guess I'm just gonna start with some candy corn. This one doesn't have any white on it. Sad, okay. <laughs> Should I do the candy corn on the orange or the candy corn on the purple so it pops? Do a little bit of each. And this is the part where this just kind of becomes like a little fun craft for me. They're not really big enough for multiple candy corn. I don't know what's supposed to happen. Will the corn syrup dry? Is that how this works? <laughs> or will it just be like sticky forever? Will they just slide off? Okay, we'll let these dry a little bit and then we'll give them a taste. All right, it's time to taste our lollipops. They turned out really cute. It was a whirlwind of an experience. I was stressed the whole time, <laughs> but I think they turned out pretty cute. Let's. Let's dig in. That's candy. <laughs> I mean, it really is just like a lollipop. I feel like the sugar is way too hard for me to bite into it. So you're just, you're just sucking on it. <laughs> Interesting. There's not much flavor to it. It's just sugary. Same with the candy corn. There's not much flavor to candy corn either aside from sugar. But it's fun. Simple, quick, easy treat. You can have fun with it. You can make like a craft into it with your kids. And then it's fun to like make something you usually don't make. Like usually you buy lollipops. So to like make them at home is kind of fun. And it's more simple than I thought it would be. But yeah, I can't really comment on the flavor. It really is just a ball of sugar <laughs> I'm sucking on, but it's not bad. 
Did we learn what a lolly dog is? No, we didn't. <laughs> but I still think we had a fun time. I kind of did like a Halloween twist on these, but I could see you making these lollipops any time of year for any holiday, any theme, any like colors or patterns with any type of candy. There's a lot of flexibility here. And I think it's like as much fun of a craft as it is like a cooking experiment, but it does all have to happen really fast, you know? So just keep that in mind if you're gonna give this a try. <laughs> it's quite a whirlwind experience, but I thought it was pretty cute, pretty fun, pretty simple. I guess I'll give it four out of five red spoons. All right, back to the box. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, last year for Halloween, I made jack-o'-lantern cookies. So check out that video next. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. And until next time, happy homemaking.